there, Drip Tippers, and today it is time, as you can see from behind me, for another Driptastic tutorial review. And this time I am going to teach you how to make a Clapton coil, so named because it is a coil with a thicker gauge inner core, with a thinner gauge outer core wrapped around and around and around it, thus resembling a guitar string named after Eric Clapton. Um, I'm a big fan of Clapton coils. They work really well in um, rebuildables. For instance, this is the sub box with the rebuildable in it. And I have a, uh, a four wrap spaced Clapton coil coming out to about 0.7 ohms, which is just wonderful. The flavor is amazing with the Clapton. Um, the flavor is really great. Uh, the vapor production is really nice. It's really thick. Um, and you, you kind of get it like a really full bodied vape off of it. And it also, this is a personal preference thing, it has a great sound. Listen to this bitch. I love that. Oh, I love it. Mm. Yum. I like it nice and thick. You know, the Clapton coil. It's, you'll, you'll be crying tears in heaven once you wrap your own Clapton coil and you put it in an RBA. Maybe Maybe that's what all the clouds in heaven are made of, is all the vapor put out by a Clapton coil rising to the top, creating a, a strawberry, creamy, heavenly vapor puff for all the angels to prance about in. Who the hell knows? Um, what I like about this technique is it's actually a lot easier than uh, I thought it would be as I kick the camera to make the Clapton coil. All you need is a drill. This isn't even a very good drill, but it's a drill. Um, you will need your inner core. In this case, I'm working with 26 gauge a can thaw. And your outer core. In this case, 32 gauge can thaw. And what was cool when I discovered this is because uh, I had just had the 32 gauge lying around from way back in the day when I was wrapping like pro tank coils. So for all you people that have a spool of 32 that just been sitting there, now you can put it to good use. Um, and there's another piece to the puzzle. Where the hell did I put it? Where are you? Ah. There's a little trick for what I'm going to teach you that I find uh, makes the process a lot easier. Um, who here has an old Pro Tank coil? Pro Tank 2. I have a lot of them. They're gunky. What we want to do is remove the pin, the so from the bottom of the pro tank coil. Bloop, bloop. Pull that pin out. Because this pin actually is a wonderful guide for your outer wrap. Because as you're spinning the inner, uh, inner core around and around, the wrap, uh, the outer wrap is gonna be going around and around. And while you can use your fingers to guide it, uh, who the hell wants to do that? It can, it can get very uncomfortable on your skin. So. This little pin is a great guide with which to run the outer wire up through the bottom because it's hollow and because it's got a ridge at the bottom, which of course were the, the, um, the pin connectors for the 510, um, there's a ridge in between that with a hollow inner thing. I'm not doing a very good job of describing this, but the outer, but the, the thick gauge wire can sit in the ridge while the inner wire is spooled up through it. I'll show you more in the close-up when I wrap a piece of Clapton. So, I think that's enough for an intro. Uh, I think it's time to jump into the close-up and show you how to wrap a Clapton. Okay, so first we're going to start with your drill bit, and that's kind of the way the chuck should be looking. Keep it open and ready. You're going to start with the length of your inner core. In this case, I'm using 26 gauge Canthal. Let's move some of this shit out of the way. Um, and you really want to make sure that the wire is as straight as possible because once you put it in the chuck and begin spinning It's going to rotate around and around and again uh, around and around again And if it's not straight, it's going to start whipping around and cause a lot of difficulty. So Let's just get that there and then what I'm gonna do is kind of Put that down for a second. Here's our outer core This is our 32 gauge canthal that's going to wrap, wrap around the inner core. Um, so before we get both of them in the chuck, here's where I use my handy dandy little pin 
from a ProTank 2 coil. Lots of old school vapors are going to have a million of these ProTank 2 coils just kind of lying around. Um, and now you can use them for your added benefit because, as you can see, there's a little groove in it. And the inner core wire is going to sit in that little groove and the outer core is going to be guided up through the bottom because, of course, they're hollow. Um, and again, you can use your fingers for it, but I much prefer to do this. And I'll show you what I mean. So before we put them in the chuck, make sure you put your outer core wire, 32 gauge, through the pin with the groove side up. Your groove thing should go up. So we'll run that through the wire like so. I can do it. Okay. So that's in there. Now it's time to get both of these. Let me just raise the camera a little bit. Shitty hardware. You can do it. Now it's time to get both of these into the drill. So I'm going to spin this for you guys to see what we're doing. Let's open up the chuck. We'll get one end of our straightened as much as possible. 26 gauge inner core. Run these together like this. Then what I do is just simply put a bend in them so they're together. And even bend them back up like this. And you want to basically insert them so that the leads coming out are as centered as possible. That's very important. That's most of the equation here. So then pull the chuck, chuck tight. Okay. Take your little pro tank pin. And again, if you don't have a pro tank pin, this is just a little trick. You can use your fingers for it. And it doesn't really hurt as much as you think it would. But I do like to use a pro tank pin. Okay. So I had to reset for technical difficulties. So once we get going, we're just going to run a little slack into this. You want to spin it slowly. And just get a little distance from the chuck. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to pinch this pin pretty hard. And with my lower fingers, I'm going to trap the outer core as much as possible. Because we really want to have a uniform tension on this. Now as we get going... It's going to double up on itself. It's going to be a little messy, but then I promise you, you will hit a groove where all of a sudden Clapton is coming to life in front of your eyes. It's like Frampton comes alive if it were Clapton and we're making vape coil. So I'm going to stop. I need to get a better grip on this. You really want to keep it level. And you kind of want to gently pull to your left. There we go. Now you can see the coil is being made. And it just kind of takes on a life of its own. If it doubles up on itself, just keep nudging it to the left. The important part is keeping a uniform pace so that you don't get any kinks. Kinks will kill this whole operation. There we go. That's better lighting for this shit. Okay, once you release it, there'll be a little swing back, but 
as you can see there are a couple inconsistent spots in the cable and I must admit that's because I'm doing this with a big camera in between me usually if I can get a little closer I have a little more accuracy but there are many 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 usable beautiful lengths of, uh, of coil especially towards the end like this whole chunk I can make probably a couple really good coils out of and another length at the bottom I you will not have the difficulty I had only because I'm doing this with a, a huge tripod and camera set up uh, <laughs> under me um, but that's basically it once you find the groove um, then it just kind of winds itself uh, this is definitely a lots of trial and error thing um, but it is definitely worth trying especially if you have like a spool of 32 gauge that you haven't touched in a year and a half or so. Um, so let's hop back out to the wide and talk about this a little more. All right, there you have it. Uh, hopefully that was descriptive enough. This is definitely a trial and error process. You're gonna waste a little bit of wire getting the hang of it, but once you see it actually spinning, you're like, oh my God, that was a lot easier than I thought. Um, I have cut my coil into nice little sections with which to uh, use for RBA wraps. I, got, I can get a, a couple coils out of that one. My recommendation if we're going to use this in an RBA, something uh, simpler like the sub box is do four wraps around a 2 to 2.5 millimeter drill bit. I found four spaced wraps around a 2 to 2.5 millimeter drill bit to come out to just about 6 or 7 ohms. It's like the perfect temperature. Uh, it heats up the, the liquid to just the, the right amount. It, it's my like third bowl of porridge, if you will. Um, so that's that. Uh, I hope this was instructional for you and you get some new uh, coil building and wrapping techniques out of it. As always, if you have any comments or questions, put them in the comments or questions box. It's late. It's very late, but I wanted to get this video out for you guys. Um, and that's that. So thank you very much for watching the drip tip. Please like the video, share the video with your, your social networks, uh, subscribe to the channel. Thank you all the new subscribers who are coming on board. And that's that. I am Ben Morrison for the drip tip. And remember, if your tip ain't dripping, you tripping.